Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my long-awaited eyeshadow palette collection video. Now I know, we need to go ahead and get it out of the way, I own a lot of eyeshadow palettes. It is my absolute favorite part of makeup. I love it more than anything else. And I have been collecting these for quite some time. I didn't go out and buy all of them at once. Eyeshadow is one thing where if you buy a palette, it really is an investment. It will stick around for a long time. You know, if it's one thing that pen that palette has taught me is that eyeshadows last a long time. But I do love them and I love collecting them. So we're gonna go through each one of my palettes. First, we're gonna go through with the two little stacks that I have right here. These are what I'm currently keeping on top of my vanity in like my everyday little basket. So let's start there. First, I have these two Kylie Cosmetics palettes. This is the purple palette. It is fairly new and I am enjoying it so far. The other one, I have a whole video on this one. It is the Blue Honey palette. This one doesn't have a mirror like the purple one, but I'm absolutely loving this palette. If you want, I'll go ahead and throw up my video all about this palette in the cards so you can take a look on the full review there. Next up on my everyday is my first Juvia's Place palette. It is the Festival by Juvia's. This shadow did end up cracking a little bit, but overall I think it's a beautiful palette. I've only been able to play with it a couple of times so far with these two shadows up here and then this one down here. So I'm excited to really get into this palette and, you know, play around with it a little bit more. Next one, a palette I also have a video on, the BH Cosmetics Glam Reflection Smoke Palette. And this one is beautiful. I'm loving it so much so far and I do want to play with it more. I'll go ahead and I'll link my video on this palette in the cards. Next, this isn't my only Too Faced palette but is one I'm keeping up in my everyday makeup like vanity section. It is the Sweet Peach palette. I got this quite a while ago and it still looks fairly new so I do want to get a little bit more use out of it and just, you know, rotate it, you know, rotate them, some things from my collection to my everyday drawer. Next, I have my Natasha Denona Green Brown Palette, and this is just stunning. I've only worked with it a couple of times so far, so I am keeping it on top of my vanity just so it is within arm's reach, and I'll remember to use it a little bit more and really get my money's worth out of it. Okay, so next, I do have some two new palettes that I have yet to open. I have the Take Me Back to Brazil palette. I have broken into this to swatch it and just look at a few of the colors, but I haven't actually used it on my eyes yet. And then I have the Viseart Warm Neutral. What is that noise? Anyway, next I have the Viseart Neutral Matte palette. I haven't cracked into this one yet. It is one that I've had my eye on for quite some time, so I did finally pick up a Viseart full palette. I do have, you'll see in my smaller palette section, I do have quite a couple of the tinier Viseart. Um, I forgot what they're called, I'll see when we get down there. But this is the first full size palette that I've gotten and I'm excited to break into it. Okay, so finally getting into the drawer. I do try to keep it organized by brand, but in some instances it's just not possible, you know, to keep it looking organized and everything. So let's start from the back over here. I do have an empty Z palette that I got in a boxy charm. I just recently got a couple of bigger Z palettes, so I did kind of transfer most of my shadows into there. So I just keep this one for backup. Next, an eyeshadow palette that I was fairly disappointed in. This is the Glam Metals from Crown. I got this in a boxy charm. I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. The shadow right here came completely shattered when I got the palette. I tried repressing it, but it didn't work as well. And then to be honest, the rest of the shades I do have in other shades or in other palettes in my collection. And I'm just not really interested in this palette anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to someone who could really get some use out of it. Next, I have a palette from Cargo. This is the Getaway palette, and it's got some really beautiful, unique colors in here. Like, I love those little mustard up here. I love the purples. I actually haven't had a chance to try this palette out yet, so until I try it out, I'm going to go ahead and keep it in my collection. Next, from Pure, I have the Sure Diaries palette, and this is an absolutely stunning palette. I love working with it. I love how everything's broken up into like these little quads that you can use and it really is a beautiful like neutral palette. 
From the balm, I have three palettes. I have the Meet Matte Nude palette, the Meet Matrimony palette, and then the Nude Tude palette. So the Meet Matte Nude, that's what it looks like right there. I honestly haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of this one, but I am keeping it around because it does have a nice range of matte neutrals, just in case I ever need to pull this out. The Meet Matrimony is, I think, my favorite out of all the balm palettes. It really is just every shade that you might ever need. It's got a great black in here. The burgundy is stunning. And then this is the perfect like lid all over setting your primer shade. And these really do blend out like butter. I love this palette so much. And then the Nude Tude. I thought I would get a little bit more use out of it than I currently have, but this one, uh, the, the brush is garbage. I don't know why I still have it in here. I basically stick to this like quad right over here. I love the burgundy again. I love the brown. I love the black. The rest, like these pinks are just kind of eh. This yellow is so flaky and it doesn't really blend out that well. But I'm going to keep this tried out a few more times. I'll probably rotate it into my everyday makeup drawer in the next couple of weeks just to see um, if I do like enough of the shades to make it worth keeping this in my collection. All right, next I have two um, palettes from Bad Habit, the Solstice and the Supernova, and these are supposed to be dupes for the Natasha Denona Sunset palette and the Lila palette, and I do have both of those as well. I'm actually working on a comparison video. I really want to go in depth as to whether I think the um, dupe palettes for each of these are worth it. I've barely gotten any use out of my Lila palette. It looks really dirty, but you know, the minute you swatch these or use them, dust kicks up everywhere. So they do look messy, even though I haven't really gotten into them yet. And then this is the Supernova dupe. And then this is the Solstice. They really are beautiful. All right, next up I have all of my ColourPop palettes. So many of them. Let's go through. I think my favorite, as everyone's favorite, is the Yes Please palette. Mine is fairly disgusting looking, but I do love these shades. With most of these ColourPop palettes, I have popped out the shades and rearranged them because honestly I hate the way that they arrange their shadows in palettes. I don't like... Overall, I don't like how companies just kind of like jumble it up and throw it out there just, you know, to be edgy or different. I like to lay them out in a way that makes sense to me, to sense, you know, color theory. And then from there, I can get creative. So I will say it is really easy to depot these and just move them around. So this is what my Yes Please palette looks like. For the element of surprise... This is how I rearrange them. Normally I like to keep all the mattes together and then the shimmers in just kind of like a more cohesive way. I haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of that this one yet, but I do love this like purpley shade right here. I have the Dream Street palette. I really, honestly, like I kind of regretted this purchase. I really don't want to support Kathleen Lights anymore. But I did want to try this palette out because the colors are beautiful and I have been really drawn to like the dark deep mattes recently. Like the like the the blue, the red, and like this mustard are just gorgeous. So that's what that palette looks like. Next I have the Femme Rosa palette, and this is how I rearranged this one. I honestly have barely touched this palette because it's just so comparable, I believe, to the Modern Renaissance and to the Naked 3 that I didn't really feel myself reaching towards this one. So this is probably another regret. I think I grabbed it because it was, um, you know, limited edition and they did the last restock and I grabbed it and honestly I really didn't need this one. Next, this is the I Think I Love You palette, and here is how I rearranged my shades in here. I did all the mattes up top. You really do have some gorgeous, like, neutrals right there. Like, that is probably, like, the only neutral, like, line that you'll need. And then I love their shimmers. This golden is beautiful, and then this, like, coppery color down here is spectacular. 
Next V, you had me at Hello Palette. This is how I rearranged mine. This, I will say these shadows get really messy, the ones down here in this corner right here, um, but the mattes are stunning. They blend out like nothing I've ever seen, even though they are messy. I always do my eyeshadow first, so I never run into this problem, but even if they are messy, they still look beautiful and they last long. Next, I have the My Little Pony palette. This is another recent purchase. I just picked this up a couple of weeks ago, and here's how I rearranged it. I actually saw someone on Reddit rearrange it just like this, and... I changed the way that I had rearranged it because this was just so much better. I love this blue line on the bottom. It's just stunning. And this middle line is a great neutral. I just, ugh, these colors just speak to me. <laughs> All right, and next, the ColourPop All I See is Magic palette. And I rearranged this one just to have most of the mattes here on the center row. All of the beautiful jewel sparkle tones on the bottom and then more of like the neutral colors up on top. I honestly have only used this like once or twice. But I am going to rotate this back into my collection soon because, you know, even just looking at it now I feel inspired looking at this palette. And I do like that they did come out with like a bigger version of their pressed powder shadow palettes. Um, it's, it was a nice change of pace because now Colourpop is just, it's too much Colourpop. Next, this is a uh, one of the ColourPop empty palettes. Right now, it just has a Wet n Wild shot or a Wet n Wild highlighter in it. Next, I have another palette from Bad Habit. This is the Athena palette, and this is supposed to be a dupe of the um, Desert Dusk palette. You know, I think this is stunning. I really don't like this glitter shade, but every other shade is beautiful. The mattes blend out spectacular. I have to use a glitter glue when it comes to the shimmers and the um satins but i always use a glitter glue just because my eyes are really hooded and if i don't color will immediately fade but i 100 percent think that this is worth the purchase i don't own the original palette but honestly i don't feel the need to own it now that i have this one next i believe i'm gonna go ahead and declutter this palette this is from deuce i believe is how you pronounce it and this came my grandma got fab fit fun and this was a shadow palette that came with it and she didn't like it so she gave it to me and i ended up not liking it the shadows are just really powdery but they don't blend into anything they look like nothing upon your eye and then this like highlight shade it's uh, it's nothing special honestly um and it's just taking up room in my collection so i'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one now this next palette is from clinique and it's got some, I need to get rid of this brush, that brush is garbage. But it has some really like nice cool tone shadows in here. The only thing is that I did try this palette once and these like light white shades are total garbage. <laughs> right off the bat. I am gonna hold on to this. I do want to give it a second shot because some of the shadows are really pigmented and beautiful and I don't want to discount the palette just for one or two shades. So I am gonna hold on to this and give it another shot before I decide if I want to declutter it. Next, I have quite a few palettes from Bad Habit. This one is the Artistry palette and this is supposed to be a dupe for the um, Master Palette by Mario from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I haven't actually used this palette yet, um, but the shades are gorgeous. I do love the color combinations here. I also um, want to follow along with tutorials from that palette. I know LS is currently panning her Mario palette, and she's going to be doing a couple of looks leading up to her using up the palette, and I really do want to follow along, so that's another reason why I do want to hold on to this one. Next, I have the Aura palette, and this is supposed to be a dupe of the, uh, oh, what's that palette from ABH? The Prism. There we go. It was the Prism palette. I've used this a few times. I don't really like the mattes in this one. It's, it's, these Bad Habit palettes can be hit or miss. The mattes aren't really that great, but the shimmers are phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, I love Ethereal, I love Ecstasy, and Phenomenon. So this palette is worth keeping just for those shimmers alone. Next, I have the Retro Love palette, which was, of course, the dupe for the Subculture palette, which I also have. I have to say, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more blendable and that has a little bit more pigmentation in the shimmers, like, I love, I love Psychedelic so much more than I like Cube. And 
I like Icon more than I like the shade from the Subculture palette. I believe the mattes in Subculture, you really can't beat them. They take a lot to work with. But I think that having these shimmers in here that work, you know, better. I like using it with the Subculture palette, if that makes sense. Next, I do have a palette from MAC. This is the Basic Bitch palette. Honestly, I don't get a whole lot of use out of this. The highlighter is just okay. The shades are beautiful, but every look you get out of here is going to be super dramatic and super smoky. And I don't always feel myself needing to go like that dark and smoky, but I do hold on to it because it was my first MAC palette. Next, of course, I have the Modern Renaissance palette and the Subculture palette. My Subculture's gotten a decent amount of love. Surprisingly, I haven't hit pan in anything. I think it's because I, I, I'm really careful and I only dip a little bit in. So even though I've used this a whole ton, you really can't tell a whole lot. I really need to rotate back my um, Modern Renaissance palette because I haven't touched this in weeks. And just looking at this palette, like I have ideas and I wanna work with it. So I really need to rotate this back in. Next, I have my Urban Decay palettes. I have the Naked 2, the Naked 3, and the Naked Heat. I've never actually owned the original Naked palette. And, you know, I really don't feel the need to because everyone who's ever gotten it has only ever gotten it because of the hype. And I think my perfect Naked palette is this one right here. I love the Naked 2. It was my one of my first high-end palettes ever. It was my first Urban Decay palette ever. And you just have a wide range of shades that cover all your bases. The brush isn't complete garbage, so I actually like and I use the brush. And people don't like this packaging. I actually love this packaging. I don't. I wish a decent amount of palettes came in like this hard plastic packaging. My Naked 3 has a little bit of pan in here. This is something I would bring out probably for like a Valentine's Day tutorial because I love the shade Buzz and the shade Trick down here. And then my Naked Heat palette. You can't really tell. I have used these quite a lot and I love like these like shimmers. Like Lumber, You there is no other shade that compares to these shades. And other than the Sunset palette, the Naked Heat was the one that like started the craze of all these warm shadows. I mean, I would say between those two and the ColourPop Yes Please palette, you don't need any more warm shadows. Like that's like your set. <laughs> Next, I have all of my Lorac Pro palettes. I have the Pro 1, which was another one of my first palettes. Ooh. It's got a lot of use, looking a little dirty right there. My Lorac 2, which is a little bit newer, and I haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of this. Something I need to work on is using more cool toned shadows. I don't know if it's just because that's what's coming out more recently that I'm gravitating more towards warm shadows or if I just feel more comfortable with warm shadows but I need to work on them more. Speaking of warm shadows, the Lorac 3. <laughs> this looks so messy, excuse me, but I love, I love these shades, especially terracotta up there, dark brown, amethyst is gorgeous. I love working that into the outer V. Oh, beautiful. I have two more Too Faced. I have the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar. I've, I've honestly only used this like once. I really need to play around with it a little bit more and see whether or not I truly like it. And I have the Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. Let's see if I can. It is beautiful. Like I am glad that I purchased it. Honestly, like I think this is beautiful and I love this palette. And I, even though I bought it like on a whim, like, I'm glad that I purchased it because some these shadows are just stunning. Oh my god, we finally made it through the first drawer. <laughs> so next up, I keep all of my smaller palettes and all of my larger palettes in the bottom drawer. So we'll start at the front. I have my other Marc Jacobs palette. This is in Editorial. It's got some really beautiful, like, golds, and I love these two greens. And this one's beautiful as well. I haven't gotten to play a whole lot with this one yet, but I'm really excited to try it out. Next, I have my two like mini Viseart palettes. This is like the smoky one. I used this one in my New Year's Eve look and I really liked how it turned out. 
and then this one I was actually a bit disappointed in. It's like the more neutral one. These mattes don't come across that great. They don't blend as well as the mattes in the other palettes, so I'm just a little worried. So I don't enjoy this one as much as I like the Smoke palette. I really did want to try out the Minx one, which is like the really orangey, like fiery colors. But just because of how much these cost, they're like $40 for these little palettes. Just because of how much they cost and how underwhelmed I was by this one, I think I'm going to hold off on buying that other one. Next, I have two of the Maybelline City Mini palettes. This one is in Urban Jungle, and of course, it's greens. Love my greens. This one I was a little disappointed in because there's only one matte and it's incredibly dark, um, but I do like the shimmer shades, but these, like, these two shades right here are basically the same shade. So I, I think it could have been worked around better. This like white shade right here is kind of a letdown. But overall I did like these green shades in the middle. And then the other one I have is bronzed or rooftop bronzes. And this one I think is actually the best palette out of all of like the City Mini ones because you have like your nice neutral colors. You have a really nice shimmer for all over the lid. Ugh, that is a beautiful shade right there and none of them are matte but the shimmers are nice enough to where you could build them up in your crease and it won't look crazy so i do recommend these two out of the city mini palettes i did have all of them at one point and i did declutter the rest of them except for these two next i have a quite a few wet and wild palettes so first for the mini ones i have their hooked on vinyl which is this beautiful palette with these like it's like very 70s vibe is what I get from here. You get a nice blue, a nice bronze, a brow bone color, and then a nice like yellowy orange transition. I'm like truly. And then this one is called Lights Out. And it's very dark and smoky. Again, a really, ooh, again, a really nice dark green color. I'm not a huge fan of this black. It's a matte black with shimmer in it. I really don't get those. It's got a nice transition and a nice brow bone so if, like without that I think it's a nice like trio. Next I have all of their new um, 10 pal or 10 pan palettes. I've tried out all of them except for the modern renaissance dupe one which is rosé in the air and it does look beautiful but I still have to try that one out. The comfort zone one I actually like this formula a lot better than the old comfort zone. I did have the original palette and I ended up decluttering it because I didn't, they didn't blend well for me. Like it was pigmented but everything got muddy and nothing blended well. These shades are absolutely gorgeous. I love this for all over the lid. The transitions are nice and that was missing in the last palette. They didn't really have any matte transition tones. So this palette is beautiful. I would run 100% recommend this one. My close second favorite is Nude Awakening. Just this one right here. You've got some beautiful like rose colors down here. You've got really versatile transition shades right here. Like you can use these in any look that you want to do. And I love these dark shades up here, especially this burgundy. It's just, look at that. Oh, and it just looks beautiful on the eyes. So I do love that one. Next up, I have the Not A Basic Peach palette. And it's nice. I just, I personally don't find myself drawn to these colors. This is a nice blue right here. I do like this kind of shifty color right there. But honestly, I'm just not drawn to these colors as much as I am some of the other palettes. But it is a nice palette. Over here, I have my two Huda Beauty Electric and Smoky Obsessions palettes. I haven't actually tried out the Smoky Obsessions. I think I'm going to hold on to this for another first impression video that I have coming up. The Electric Obsessions, I absolutely love this palette. I really want to look up a few more tutorials and play with it more, but this red is, I mean, it comes out a little bit more pink on my eyelids, but it's beautiful. This is one of the prettiest, like, teals. I have ever found in a palette ever that this yellow is absolutely gorgeous it's just you don't see this a whole lot recently and I just really appreciate that they threw a bunch of color in one palette and I love it
Next, I have one of the Kat Von D Shade and Light Quads. I actually got this at my local TJ Maxx. It was like $9. And they're nice, warm, neutral tones that you can use with any look. And they're all matte. I did have the same quad, the smoky one. But those shades weren't as nice. And then I tried the Depot it and I like totally destroyed it. So that is one thing about these. The packaging is really annoying. Like, if I could Depot these without like ruining the packaging, I would. <laughs> If anyone has any suggestions on how to depot these shadows, please let me know below because I, I hate this packaging so much, but the shadows are beautiful. Next, I have a new MAC palette that I haven't gotten to break into yet. It is one of the Times 9. It is the Semi Sweet Times 9. And I just love these colors, especially this trio right here. I just love it. I think I bought the palette just for this trio right here because it's beautiful. I love like that mustardy shade. These are kind of just like regular neutrals you'll find. But I wanted to try out more of the MAC eyeshadow formula. I did only have one palette before this one and it was the Basic Bitch palette. And it wasn't one that I would use on an everyday basis. So I wanted to try a um, try MAC shadows that were in shades that I could use them a little bit more often. Okay, so I think my camera is ready to be done with this. It's cut out again, so I had to reposition a couple of things. But we stopped at a nice spot. So next I have all of my, like, 10 pan e.l.f. palettes. I don't have all of them, but I do have my favorites right here. First I have the Mad for Matte 2. These are beautiful shades for the fall. I love every look that I made of this palette. This one is so much different than the first Mad for Matte shadow palette. If you have that first one and you've tried it out and didn't really like it, like, I had the same thing happen because I did not think the first Mad for Matte formula was that great. Like, the shadows weren't pigmented, they are really powdery, they didn't blend, so that really turned me off of e.l.f. shadows for a long time until I actually went ahead and bought the Mad for Matte 2 and these are beautiful. This is the best orange in a drugstore palette that I found. These are great neutral everyday colors that you could use and then these like deep colors actually show up like these colors on your eyes which is rare. <laughs> Next I have the Mad for Matte Holy Smokes. I haven't really used this palette at all. I think I've swatched a couple of the shadows but it is a really nice color scheme and I really want to start using it when I try more dramatic like nighttime smoky looks. Next I have the matte, or not matte from matte, this is just the Everyday Smoky palette. And this palette is gorgeous. I love all of the shimmers in here, especially this one. You have everything you need to make it just like it says, like an Everyday Smoky eye. And so I love using this one. I, it tends to get lost, these little palettes tend to get lost in the bottom drawer of my collection, but whenever I pull them out and I use them, I'm never disappointed. Like, ever. Okay, and then this one's kind of similar. This one is the Nude Rose Gold. This one is fairly identical to my Urban Decay um, Naked 3 palette. Let me pull that one out. Yeah, these are practically the same palette. <laughs> Honestly, like... I don't need both of these in my collection. They're they're really, they really are the same palette, so I should get I should I should get rid of this one. I need to get this to someone who's actually going to use it and is going to appreciate it, and I need to use my Naked Three more. <laughs> Alrighty, next I have two of the Natasha Denona Five Pan palettes. This one is the shadow palette number two, and. Along that same vein, beautiful, rosy colors. I love this deep shade all the way on the end. Love it to bits. The other one I have is palette number 11. And God, look at these colors. Beautiful. Especially this end, like... I think that if you really want to try Natasha Denona, don't get... The sunset palette don't get the lila palette get one of these five pants first they're not as crazy priced as the rest of her products and i really think they do give you everything you need for a full look in each palette and you get to try out the formula and see what's something that you really like so i would recommend these and not any of her like bigger palettes Next, I have two like mini like tin palettes from Too Faced. First, I have the Boudoir Eyes, and then I have the Natural Eyes. 
This is actually a brand new one because I actually just hit pan on most of the shadows in my old version of this palette because this palette was actually, this was the very first eyeshadow palette I ever bought. <laughs> I worked overtime one week and I walked into Sephora and I looked around and this caught my eye. So I hit hard pan, or not hard pan, but I hit like major pan and all of these shades over here. I completely used up sugar walls and fuzzy handcuffs and I hit pan on Voulez Vous and Lap Dance. This one is very sentimental for me since it was my first palette, which is why I, like I repurchased it. Um, so I don't think I ever would declutter this. And I think I saw how they are re-releasing the natural eyes in the new packaging. I think that if they did that for the boudoir eyes, I would have to pick it up. Just because of just how sentimental like this palette is for me. <laughs> and this is what my natural eyes palette looks. Let's try not to blind you guys. This is what my natural eyes palette looks like. I have a decent amount of pan on that shade right there. And I do have a lot of wear in this goldy bronze and the gold down there. Alright, next I have the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Volume 2. I forgot I actually had this palette. And to be honest, I don't use it ever. Like the packaging is kind of annoying. It's round. It rolls around in here. I got this in a boxy charm. It, I can get a workable look out of this whenever I actually pull it out to use it but it takes me longer to actually get anything out of it. And honestly, I don't think it's worth it compared to all the other shadows that I have where I can get a beautiful look, you know, in half the time with half the effort. I really don't need this palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. All right, getting into the big palettes. Let's just pull them all out. Okay, first I have my Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. It is dirty, excuse that. And that's what it looks like. I do enjoy this palette. You know, I will go ahead and agree and say that if you cover up this corner, it's just like a huge neutral palette. <laughs> Nothing that different. But to be honest, when I purchased this, my collection wasn't as big as it was right now. So I didn't really have a whole lot of the warm colors. I didn't have a lot of nice shimmers like the ones up here in the corner. And, you know, to be honest, I bought into the hype a little bit. I hadn't tried... I've only tried one Morphe palette before this one, so I wanted to see what the hype was about. I watched, I watched a lot of the videos from Jen Love's reviews, and I got sucked in and really wanted it. So I think on like the third restock, I was able to pick this up. Next is the Morphe palette that I had tried before that one. This is the 35K, the coffee palette. And, you know, I will be honest, I love these shades like I love looking at this palette it's very aesthetically pleasing but I've yet to make you know looks out of this that are cohesive that are nice like honestly I have trouble and I tried looking up tutorials and like nobody has tutorials for this palette so honestly I keep it because it was my first Morphe palette and because I love these shadows I just have no idea what to do with it I need to pull it out for a week and just play around with the colors and see if I can get anything out of it, but it's just a little frustrating to me. <laughs> it's almost like the paralysis of choice. There's just so many shades. <laughs> All right, next I have the Carly Bible Deluxe Palette. This is a beautiful palette. Do I think it's the best palette ever? Not really. Do I think it's incredibly user-friendly and nice and neutral? Yes, I do love these highlights down here. But was the whole palette worth getting just for the highlights? Not really. Um, I think this is great if you're a beginner because it does give you a lot to work with. And I do love the mix of the shadows. The shadows themselves are beautiful. Like they blend out nicely. They look beautiful upon the eye. They swatch, you know, beautifully. It's just, I think I have these several times over in my collection. You know, this is a recent addition to my collection, so I'm not going to declutter it just now, but... With all the options that I have, I don't find myself reaching for this palette. You know, no matter how beautiful the shades are or how like gorgeous like the packaging is. Like, I think this was a really well done palette. Okay, next I have an empty ColourPop palette that's not quite- oh, it's all dirty, ignore that. Full of a bunch of my single shadows. These, I'm not gonna go through all of them because there's just way too many. If you guys want a video of me going through all my singles, I'd be happy to do it. But this video is getting pretty long enough as it is. Um, 
So these are, I think, you know, most of my singles. I tried arranging them in a way that I thought was most pleasing. I really like this quad right here. I think it's my favorite part of this palette. But yeah, so I keep all my singles in there. Next, I have another um, palette from Bad Habit. This is the Midsummer Night palette. And this was supposed to be a dupe of that Too Faced Natural Love palette that came out over this past year. And honestly, I bought that Too Faced palette and I tried it out and I was so disappointed. I ended up returning it to Sephora because it was the biggest letdown of a palette ever. Um, but I did like the shades. Like, it was a nice array of natural colors. And this palette gives you all of that, but the shades actually show up on your eyes. They don't blend away to nothing. I just think this is a beautiful palette. It was less than $20. I think it was like $15 or $16, and I saved up my hush points, and I think I got a dollar or two off. You really get everything you need for any neutral look you could do. I think I'm going to do a three looks, one palette with this one, because just looking at this, like, I feel inspired. Next, I have the Tartiste Pro. This is going to be reflective no matter what I do. So, I have the Tartiste Pro palette. This was a birthday gift a couple of years ago, and I haven't really been using it a whole lot lately. Honestly, I love this first row down here, and I love the row up here, but these two middle rows I've barely even, like, touched. I'm not a huge fan of these shimmers down here on the end. I don't know. I was very on the fence about this palette. I need to pull it out and like try it again just to see if it's, you know, really worth keeping in my collection. One of the best parts of this palette for me was how big the mirror was. Like it's a huge mirror and it stands up on its own. So it was great for travel. It was great for, you know, leaning this up to do your makeup, but it's not really worth keeping if it's just for like a mirror. But I'm gonna give it one more try. And last but not least, I have my Zodiac palette from BH Cosmetics. God, look how beautiful that is. Mine's dirty as all hell because I use the hell out of this and there's just glitter all over the place. But I love everything about this palette. All of these baked shadows are they're stunning. They're stunning. All the matte shadows are buttery. They blend out like a dream. I'm not a huge fan of the highlight shadow as a highlight. Um, but it is beautiful as a transformer shade on top of some of these other mattes, on top of some of the baked shadows. I wouldn't use it as a highlight because it doesn't really blend out well on my, on like your cheeks, but as an eyeshadow it does look beautiful. So that's it guys, that's my entire eyeshadow palette collection. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. I hope you had fun. I love videos like this where I get to peep into someone else's collection, see what they use, see what their palettes look like. So I hoped that you liked this video as well. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you head out today. And I hope I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye.